Hey guys, how's it going? Alex Scott here with Concertini.com. Thank you so much for checking out another one of our super cool studio gear reviews. This is the Donner DEP20 Digital Grand Piano. Now, first of all, big shout out to the guys at Donner who sent us this piano to take a look at. Um, Donner has a variety of different digital pianos for sale, particularly on Amazon. That's where they sent us ours from. And uh, yeah, they just sent it over and said, hey, you know, we know you've done some synths and some other kind of keyboard type reviews. So if you would like to check out one of our digital grands, you're more than welcome. We said, yeah, absolutely. You know, let's let's take a whack at it. So this is it, the DEP20 Digital Grand. It is honestly just a very standard, very basic digital grand piano. It's not necessarily the kind of thing that I would normally look for in a keyboard as like a studio professional. It's much more geared towards students, people who are learning how to play piano, whether you're younger, you know, a kid or a high school or something like that, or older, uh, doesn't really matter, but that's, it's definitely more geared towards the learning pianist than it is towards any kinds of like gigging player or anything like that. So we're gonna go over some of the features. I'm gonna run through a couple of the sounds that it comes to stock with and, and all that stuff. So yeah, let's, uh, let's jump over to our all new split screen mode. Boom, split screen, look at that. Okay, so again, very, very basic digital grand piano. Uh, we got a whole row of controls up here. Some of them, I'm not gonna lie, are a little bit funky. Um, starting from the left, we've got a power control here. We've got a pretty standard volume slider here. Um, you can plug in an MP3 uh, kind of on a thumb drive. There's a USB kind of input on the back of it, as well as a USB output to connect it to a computer if you want to use it as a MIDI controller, which is definitely a handy feature. Uh, but you can play back MP3s on it, which is kind of cool. You just have very basic play, pause, um, and then forward and backwards, and those also serve as volume controls. Moving on from there, you have a kind of a dual function switch. This is voice, which puts you in voice mode to select whatever voice you want to use. And then also if you double tap, it, it'll just take you back to the standard grand piano sound. Then we have rhythm start and stop and sync, which I'm not entirely totally sure. I think maybe sync does something over MIDI. Not a thousand for sure what sync is designed for. Maybe, you know, if you've got an external MIDI sequencer running, it'll sync the tempo to that. Then we have uh, trans, which I think stands for transpose, but this is also how we scroll through our voices. Now, this is the first thing that really kind of confused me is that the up button is on the left and the down button is on the right, which is totally backwards from what I would kind of assume it to be. So that definitely caught me off guard uh, in the beginning. And then if you push both of them, it will put you into transpose mode in case you want to do that. And then you would hit voice to go back to voice. Moving over here, we have a demo mode which has a variety of different demo programs. We have a chord mode, we have touch uh, settings to kind of control velocity and stuff like that. We have some very basic effects, which is kind of fun. Setting DSP on gives you a nice basic reverb sound, which is very, very handy, as opposed to setting DSP off. We can also set up split if we want to do um, a split voice on the keyboard. You don't have like an organ on one half and a grand on the other half, something like that. Um, then we have these tempo up and down buttons, which is a little unusual that they're so far spread apart compared to the other buttons, but hey, whatever. You can also do double voice where like if you want to do a um, grand piano sound and a pad sound together or something like that. Uh, drum mode. Has some pretty classic cheesy drums on it. Uh, metronome and then uh, record and replay, which allows you to record basic um, sequences of yourself playing and then play them back. So that's really the features on the top of the keyboard on the back. It's also incredibly simple. We basically have a sustain pedal input. We have a USB output, like I said, to connect it to use as a MIDI controller. Uh, we have a MIDI, a traditional five pin MIDI output as well, in case you need to use that. And then a uh, quarter inch input, which is kind of interesting. I'm not sure what that would be used for. And then a single quarter inch output, which I do believe is mono. Um, it might be a stereo quarter inch jack, but um, I only have really, a, you know, I don't have a Y cable handy or anything like that. So unfortunately I'm not able to set it up as stereo. So I just have it running mono uh, in my computer and recording for you guys to hear. So how does it sound? Well, it sounds pretty okay. Especially, you know, if you set the reverb on, that definitely helps a lot. It 
it's got a pretty decent grand piano sound. I mean, to be totally honest, it really just comes with all of the basic sounds that you would expect a unit like this to come with. We've got our classic grand. We've got a bright piano. Electric grand honky tonk. Electric piano like a Rhodes. DX7 type E piano sound. Harpsichord. Uh, clavinet. Celeste. And really, it just continues exactly as you would expect. Vibraphone, marimba, a couple of organs. For some of those, you'll definitely want to turn that reverb on. You know, it's really just all of these kind of typical classic, I don't want to call them cheesy, but they are a little bit cheesy, let's be honest. You know, just those classic sounds that you would expect to come with a piano like this. Again, this is this is why I say it's really not meant, you know, so, somebody like myself who's, I'm not a professional keyboard player by any stretch of the imagination, but you know, I'm here in my recording studio, I've got a real Hammond organ, I've got an original 1967 Fender Rhodes, I've got a vintage upright piano, I've got a ton, you know, an original ARP Odyssey. I've got all of these synthesizers, right? And real keyboards and all these different instruments. S someone like myself doesn't really have a use for a keyboard like this. That is not to say that it is pointless or bad or anything like that. Again, the, the user for an instrument like this is going to be someone who is learning piano primarily or for somebody who, who you know, likes to play classical or likes to play simple jazz or blues tunes um, and just wants to have a decent quality piano around the house. It is a fully weighted hammer action or the hammer simulated action, which feels okay. You know, it, it does not feel quite like a real piano, but it's definitely a weighted action, which is better than, you know, a total plastic uh, MIDI controller kind of a feel. So that is that is a nice feature. Um, a few of the buttons, again, you know, the, the up and down buttons being reversed, like the tempo buttons being where they are like that, it's not necessarily like a problem. It just detracts from the fit and finish a little bit. Build quality wise, it's pretty solid and pretty sturdy. Uh, the, I have it on a keyboard stand. It does seem to tilt backwards a little bit, tilt away from me just a, a tiny little bit. I'm not sure if that's just something with my stand. I use the stand all the time and I've never noticed that before. So I'm not sure if there's something up with the bass or something like that. It does have a pair of nice speakers on board. It's got kind of big woofers pointing down on the bottom and then tweeters up here on the top, which is handy. If it is indeed only a mono output, that's also a little bit disappointing. Like I said, I don't have a stereo quarter to dual mono splitter cable handy. So I don't really have a way to test uh, whether or not that output is stereo. I believe it does have a headphone jack as well, which is definitely handy for practicing. But you know, very, very basic digital keyboard. It does have quite a few sounds, which is kind of cool. But again, you know, a lot of the sounds are very simple MIDI. And I don't want to call it cheesy because I don't want to be rude to the guys who made this keyboard because it is very nice. You know, it plays well and all that kind of stuff. But it, that's the sound set that it comes with. You've all heard it. You all know it from like Casio keyboards and cheaper Yamaha keyboards that are designed for students just learning. And it comes with 200 something sounds, which is cool for experimenting. And if you're if you're just getting started. But it's definitely not something that you're going to want to use in any kind of professional capacity. I think the basic piano sound, the grand sound, is okay. It sounds to me just like the standard MIDI wavetable grand that most computers have and most of these keyboards have. Like, it doesn't sound like anything totally unique to me. Um, one cool note is that if you scroll way, way, way up here past all of our super cheesy, um, you know... synthesized brass sounds and stuff. There are a bunch of pretty decent synth sounds. And classic, uh, like this new age, sounds exactly like Fantasia from the DX7. So that's kind of cool, warm pad.
there's definitely some use, more usable like synth tones as you get way up here into these higher numbers. But then again, it does irk me a little bit simply because they've only included like a plus and minus to scroll through all the voices as opposed to number pads. So there are, I believe, 230 something, 236, 237, something like that, different sounds. That's cool. Steel drum. Uh, but include a number pad maybe or a more, you know, a dial or something that makes it a little bit more efficient to scroll through because otherwise to get back to our, you know, our pianos, we got to just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling or sit there and hold it down, hold it down. I mean, you can jump back to the beginning just by hitting that grand piano button again, and that'll take you back to, to the grand piano sound, which is helpful. But at the same time, it's like if you want to get from the synth section to some other particular section, it definitely takes a while just sitting there clicking that button over and over and over again. That's one, you know, kind of minor uh, gripe that I have with it, I suppose. But yeah, again, it's not the kind of thing I would ever personally buy, but I think for what it is, it's very nice. For somebody who's just looking for a really, really basic... For just a basic practice piano, I think it's really nice. You know, it sounds pretty good, as you guys can can hear. Uh, it's definitely not bad. It, it doesn't sound terrible by any stretch of the imagination. Like for somebody who is practicing and learning and wants to just have something that sits in their living room or something like that that they can practice with and have a wide range of volumes, be able to connect to an external speaker if they need to, have some neat little MP3 playback features, use as a basic mini controller. It ticks all of those boxes and that's great. Um, in terms of accessories, it comes with power adapter. It does also come with a sustain pedal. Uh, which I have hooked up right now. Pretty okay quality, they're definitely a little bit plasticky, um, but it does have a polarity reversal, which I actually really love on sustain pedals because if you have any other keyboards and they expect a different um, polarity of closed versus open, it lets you switch that right on the pedal. That actually is a very handy feature. Overall, it's just a very, very basic keyboard. And if you're somebody who is looking for something like this, if you want to get into learning piano, you just need something around the house to practice with or write songs with or whatever, I think it's a really solid option. It retails for right around, I think, $299 USD, about $300. Bucks. Um, and at that price, it's built really well. You know, it's got nice action. Um, it's definitely beefy. You know, it's, I'm not sure exactly how heavy it is, but more than 10 pounds for sure. I know they are for sure available on Amazon, and we will put a link um, to it on Amazon down in the description. So definitely check that out if it seems like something you would be interested in. But yeah, overall, I would say I am gen generally pretty impressed. It's a, it's a nice keyboard. It plays well. It's got some, some cool sounds in it. It also has some, some pretty cheese ball sounds, but hey, that's okay you know cheese ball has its place too so i'd give it two thumbs up why not uh thank you again very very much to the guys at donner for sending this keyboard over i really really appreciate it it's really nice to have it here and check it out but in any case what do you guys think are you learning piano are you interested in products like this do you like uh, digital grand pianos in this style uh, it also does i forgot to mention it does come with a uh, stand for music which is really really nice that just comes out of the top here always a nice feature but yeah regardless what, whatever you guys thoughts may be definitely leave in the comments down below always appreciate hearing from you. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. Make sure to click that notification bell to be kept up to date with our new videos. And if you want to give this video a like or a share, if you found it helpful or enjoyable, that would be awesome as well. Regardless, my name is Alex Scott with Concertini.com. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.